Good evening and welcome, Hunter Symphony. Welcome to our wonderful audience tonight. Um, it is such a great honor and privilege to be sharing with you uh, the work of our fall 2020 semester. This is one of um, at least two or three concerts that we have been a part of. And uh, I, we all welcome you with open arms. This is uh, going to be an evening of some thrilling music making and, and much more. Um, I hope you will uh, consider joining us after the concert. I will be hosting a roundtable discussion with several of our musicians. Uh, we're going to be talking about the musical fabric. We're going to be talking about the historical concepts uh, and more about our program this evening and how we were able to come together as one mega musical family and make music together. Uh, so. Uh, welcome all to the Hunter Symphony. So uh, good evening and welcome to the Hunter Symphony. I'm ecstatic to be presenting the symphony tonight in a concert, including the works of Mendelssohn and Bruch. In previous seasons, I've devoted entire programs to Baroque, classical, romantic, modern, and contemporary aesthetics. This season, I've taken great delight in curating a program centered around a newly forged collaboration between the Hunter Symphony and the Jewish Studies Program. The Hunter Symphony is a collective of students and community members here at Hunter College with a fascinating combination of disciplines from mathematicians and biologists to economists and music majors. The symphony brings together the culmination of a single musical expression. I welcome you all to be our, in our musical world here at Hunter College and hope you will continue to join us for a thrilling lineup of concerts throughout this academic year and next. It's my great pleasure to welcome all of you this evening. Uh, folks, there are many introductions uh, to make before we begin the musical making uh, tonight. Uh, so I'm going to jump in. Um, it is uh, such a great treat and such a great pleasure to introduce uh, Dr. Suzanne Farron, our chair here at Hunter. And uh, Dr. Farron has uh, been a leading force in all of every single note that we make here. And so her support to the symphony uh, has enabled uh, scholarships and more uh, for us to make music together in the most exciting and elaborate ways. So uh, Dr. Farron, thank you so much. I'd like to note uh, Patrick Yankowski, also known as Professor J. Uh, he's an instructor here, a teacher at Hunter College, um, and as well as, as being an incredible instructor, he is, uh, we are honored to have uh, him as our Hunter Symphony Orchestral Manager, Professor J, uh, a very heartwarmed uh, thank you from all of us. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, Hunter guest artists. We've had so many of them this semester, and I'm going to be talking more about this post-concert and our post-concert discussion together. Uh, we've had artists from all over the world. We had Ole Bön, uh, the wonderful Norwegian violinist who uh, gave us a master class just two weeks ago from Australia, of all places, about, I believe, 14 and a half hours ahead. Uh, of our time. It was his Thursday afternoon at the time, uh, among many others, uh, all of which I'll name at the end of the concert. So thank you all so much for joining us. Um, I want to thank our students. Our musicians are extraordinary. Their perseverance, their strength, their courage. I'm inspired. This has been a time of unprecedented circumstances. We've come together in the most creative of ways to be industrious, to look for invention, to create new methods, new practices, and new devices, musically and otherwise, so that we can come together and make music as one, as one whole symphony. Uh, so thank you, Garrett, director of the Jewish and Hebrew studies here at Hunter, uh, Professor Garrett and I, began conversing already a year and a half ago. And we thought it would be just a match made in heaven for the Hunter Symphony, the music department, to be in collaboration with the Jewish Studies Program 
and we've devised a, a very fortified relationship. And I'm happy to uh, report to you all uh, that we are continuing our relationship and our, our collaboration. We are um, uh, slated for three concerts this coming spring and over the summer uh, with this incredible, incredible department. So please join us and please keep posted for our concert announcements and more. Uh, I must, must introduce uh, Jacob Sachs Michelini, uh, our brilliant uh, technician and editor and uh, sound magician. Uh, Jake, in addition to being a brilliant composer, uh, has joined us here, um, not only at the Grad Center at CUNY, but also at Hunter College, uh, uh, where he teaches as well. And uh, this simply would not be possible uh, with Jake's ingenuity and brilliance. So Jake, thank you so much. Uh, folks, uh, I would like to invite you to enjoy the concert program that I've assembled. It will give you some information about the concert and we'll list all of our exquisite musicians, um, as well as some biographical information and, and so forth. Uh, Post a uh, a nice evening recap. Uh, all things music. Yeah, we'll discuss the works in greater detail. Uh, we'll talk about uh, the theory. We'll talk about the history and all of the other components. I'd also like to begin a conversation with our musicians about what it's like to perform and practice in the time of COVID. Uh, this is a very very um, sensitive time for all of us and. I think our efforts in coming together has been nothing short of extraordinary. So I welcome you all again. Without further ado, I would like to uh, ask Jake to um, present our Mendelssohn Hebrides Overture, featuring the Hunter Symphony and Alyssa Regent, our assistant conductor as conductor.
splendid Mendelssohn. Uh, that was so thrilling. I'm seeing lots of clapping and, and smiles. Uh, this is such a wonderful sight. Uh, please, folks, feel free to use the chat option down on the lower side of the browser. Uh, share your sentiments. If you like something, please tell us uh, if you're, if you're um, hearing some particular uh, theme that, that's really uh, affecting you in a, in, a, in, a, in a wonderful way, let us know. Yeah. Uh, Hunter Stephanie, bravissimo. Bravo, bravo, bravo. Alyssa Regent, conductor, bravo. Fantastic. Um, our next work in this evening's program is by Max Bruch. Kol Nidre, scored for symphony orchestra and solo cello. We are so, so honored to have uh, had uh, one of the Hunter Symphony musical guests this semester, Issei Eyre, a brilliant cellist uh, who has worked with us, uh, not only this season, but last season as well. And we were very, very excited to welcome Issei back so that we could finish our work on Bruch together. Um, much more to talk about after the music. Uh, Jake, if you would, let's hear some Bruch.
Bermudez Wood.
Tutti bravi. Bravo, bravo, Hunter Symphony. Thank you all. Uh, special round of applause to all of our brilliant musicians here uh, at Hunter College. I'm, I'm so touched. Um, for those of you who are just joining, uh, my name is David Fulmer. I'm Director of Orchestral Studies at Hunter College. Uh, I'm also a professor, uh, part of the Composition de Program and Head of the String Department. Uh, it is such an honor to be here with all of you this evening to share our work together. Uh, we have been working on this repertoire since late August, and this is a time that we'd love to invite our musicians to the forefront of the podium uh, for us to discuss music and, and how we've been making music together in these unprecedentedly challenging times. Despite so many difficulties, it is the music that is bringing us to heal together. Uh, so I would like to open this up and I welcome folks, please uh, have a glance in the chat section. Uh, you'll see uh, that Jake has submitted the program uh, that, I've, uh, uh, that I've included. It will tell you all about our artists. Every single one of our musicians uh, is there. Every, uh, every piece that we've played tonight is listed. Uh, and this is a good opportunity, uh, Professor Jay, if you would be so kind. Would you be, uh, please, uh, in the chat, uh, put my email address as well as yours for those who would like to join the Hunter Symphony newsletter um, uh, email list. So please, folks, please keep joining us for concerts. Uh, we have some more thrilling, thrilling repertoire upcoming. Uh, I'm elated to say that we have our Hunter Symphony Concerto competition taking place in just a few weeks from now. And we will also be doing another Hunter Symphony Concerto competition in the spring around the middle of March. So in our next concerts, you'll see featured soloists from Hunter Music Department. That's on the fourth floor. Uh, so we're so pleased to have you this evening. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Please feel free to share your sentiments, share your warm thoughts with us uh, in the chat dialogue. Uh, for those on YouTube that are listening to us streaming, uh, please uh, feel free to ask questions there. We have a tech crew there to also help navigate. Uh, and at this time, I would love to invite our musicians up to the podium, so to speak, and begin a dialogue about how we have been making music in the time of COVID how we've been communicating with each other and how we've been assembling this, uh, this evening for you, how we've been uh, taking every single stratospheric musical line and sewing it together uh, as to create this unified recording. Uh, so uh, I'd like to ask Catherine uh, Sexton and Ethan, uh, just to chime in a little bit and let's just have a, a, a musical conversation about what we do here in Symphony so we can help our audience members understand our processes and what goes on in dissecting a musical score. How are we to interpret scores, this sort of written page here? Um, how do we make musical decisions with one another in the time of COVID? And, um, and so forth. So uh, Catherine or Ethan, would you like to participate? Catherine, after, after you, if you'd like to go, or I, I can go, either or. <laughs> I was just gonna tell you, how about you go? I'll go, that's fine. Um, <laughs> so um, in symphony, uh, it's really a wonderful um, experience and process going through uh, getting the music sitting down with it um, as a soloist and as a group um, it's just ph phenomenal i've been a, a professional uh, soloist for about 20 years and coming into the symphony has been a whole nother world for me um, understanding the music um, as a collective uh, level is that singular collective is just um, wonderful. And Professor Fulmer has been wonderful in um, guiding us to where we need to focus, what we need to listen for, what sections are uh, doing what and why. Um, it's really been, um, it's just wonderful. You know, I can't say that enough. Um, it's been a great experience working with all of you. And uh, yeah, thank you so much. 
Yes, please, please Ethan. Oh, please. just, uh, you know, just to um, go off of what Catherine was saying, you know, my time at in Symphony has been so great and everyone's been so welcoming and collaborative. Um, you know, definitely during our time of COVID when we're not together, the things that we discuss in class, you know, the history of the pieces that we are, um, you know, forming, um, you know, the reasons why the composers are writing certain orchestrations and why certain parts of the orchestra are highlighted. I really love that um, higher understanding of whatever piece that we're, um, you know, going through and uh, Professor Fulmer, Fulmer's uh, direction with that has been so amazing and your leadership is just so great and I'm just so happy to be in orchestra. Um, I'm a musician of many disciplines, both uh, jazz and classical and just having this outlet with classical music and um, you know orchestral music is just amazing to be a part of here at Hunter Symphony. Ethan, thank you so much. And uh, folks, uh, for our audience members, I want to stress for those who may have missed the opening minutes of uh, my opening monologue about the, the composite of the Hunter Symphony. Uh, we have so many di disciplines represented and our musicians are so brilliant here. Um, we have orchestral musicians, we have uh, uh, jazz musicians, we have pop musicians, we have every genre possible covered. And perhaps that for me has been so heartwarming because within the creative process, we work as a team and we are stronger together. And as we come together every Wednesday, which really is every day, I, I see most of you every day um, for one reason or another, either fine tuning a, a, a musical moment or, or addressing a musical, uh, 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 a theoretical historical uh, uh, issue, we come together with open ears and open eyes. And this is a community uh, for me that has represented uh, just such a diverse canvas of musical thought and integrity. Uh, we all come uh, ready to contribute and, and, and ready to be a part of this exquisite musical tapestry. Um, we are in the midst of some other incredible musical projects. If you would like to hear this program again, I'm elated to share with you that we are going to be re-presenting on December 2nd alongside the Jewish and Hebrew Studies program. Uh, and along with that, I don't wanna let uh, the cat out of the bag, but we have another surprise piece that's going to be on that program. So I'm very excited about that. Um, upcoming, we are also working on a video uh, which documented our uh, hard work on uh, a masterpiece by Florence Price, her third symphony. All of you remember our performance from uh, last fall. And so we are digging deeper uh, uh, in this score and uh, please keep an eye and an ear open for this uh, and many, many other musical projects upcoming. Uh, so Ethan, Catherine, thank you so much for sharing your experiences. I would like to invite Adam Shore and Alyssa Regent, as well as all of our musicians here, please unmute yourselves and contribute to our conversation. We want to invite our audience members into our, uh, our apartments, into our homes, into our practice spaces, because that's where we've been living. And this is where our productivity stems from. Yeah. So Adam, welcome. Alyssa, welcome. Uh, bravo to both of you. Bravo to all of you. Uh, let's share some ideas here about the process of working together as musicians. Usually we come together uh, several times a week in person and uh, ordinarily uh, on a non-COVID uh, uh, sort of scenario, we are within inches of each other making music. Um, I'm holding one of these batons and holding a few uh, pounds of scores and you're all with your musical instruments as I see here. And we rehearse for several hours every week Outside of rehearsal, you are making recordings, you're making documents, and you're practicing your parts so that we can come together as one large musical fabric and sewing this tapestry together. Yeah. Uh, so uh, without further ado, Adam, Alyssa, please share some experiences uh, throughout the last few months that have been perhaps particularly inspiring and things that we look forward to 
as we look into December and into the spring semester together as a symphony. Uh, thank you, Dr. Fulmer. Um, first, I just want to say it's it's been a, a pleasure making music with everybody this semester. I was I was kind of worried that we wouldn't be able to really produce anything uh, musically, but but you know the the teamwork that's gone into making this happen is is astonishing. So thank you. Um, what what I found particularly inspiring, besides that alone, has been the the work of of groups all around Hunter. Uh, the chamber program, the jazz program, uh, the symphony here. Uh, they've all done such such wonderful things and even even outside of Hunter College. And uh, seeing groups from all around the world and you know the, the Berlin Phil uh, and uh, other world orchestras, they get their people to, to record and they, they put together these beautiful projects. So I think just seeing that early on in the pandemic and, um, and seeing it continue through to today uh, Kind of inspires me to to put in the work for this kind of project. Yes, Adam. Thank you, Alyssa. <laughs> any thoughts? Yes. Oh, sorry. Oh, okay. Yes. So my experience was a little bit different because I was never part of an orchestra before, and my first experience with the orchestra was online. <laughs> so at the beginning, it was really challenging to, for me to to grasp the energy of this ensemble because I was not in the same room as everyone else. So um, I had to navigate through um, those murkier water, as I call them. But I ended up, uh, when I heard, actually, when I heard our final recording, it's like I felt the warmth of everyone because I knew that everyone put so much work into putting that recording together. I felt like I was conducting people even though I couldn't see you guys <laughs> and I was not with you when you recorded, but it was a really interesting experience because I practiced with other recordings, uh, professional recordings or recordings that we did to practice. But this one felt really different. I really felt like I was part of a group and that I was doing this to make other people happy. And I just... I just think it's great. Of course, we would love to be together, but in the meantime, I think this is better than not making music at all. Yes, well, well said. And I think it's, um, it's important for me to alert our audience that uh, we are assembling each one of these musical lines separately. So all of these brilliant musicians that you've heard tonight, they have practiced uh, hundreds of hours, truly to refine their parts and they've recorded every part, um, listening to our other colleagues and our, our members of the orchestra while recording. And then I collected these recordings. And in the meantime, uh, with the help of, of Jake, we assembled this. And uh, I was talking to a, a dear colleague uh, uh, yesterday and I believe we came up, uh, they're watching this, so I'm, I'm happy to share this we came up with the term that this is a meta live performance, truly, right? This, this is a live performance. This is by no means uh, anything other. This is, this is not a shadow of a shadow. Uh, this is as live as it gets. And in fact, I, I dare say, uh, and I welcome any arguments, that this style of music making is so fulfilling and it is so difficult because it requires so much discipline all of the time. Every note, every rhythm, every dynamic structure, every piece of architecture that belongs to this fabric of music is taken into account. And so when we are scrutinizing our own playing, we become the audience member as well as the performer, as well as the theorist and the analyst and the historian we have worn so many masks together this semester. Um, and this is just so heartwarming because I've not witnessed a product uh, uh, that has been assembled like this. And, and, and this has been uh, for me groundbreaking in how we can communicate and how we can continue to make music. Of course, we look forward to being back in our, our wonderful concert hall and assembly hall in Hunter North building. However, uh, as well as the many other venues that we of course, utilized. Uh, that being said, we have so much music making at our fingertips here going on. 
Um, so uh, I, I just want to thank you all uh, uh, so much for contributing. Um, and I, audience members, uh, we welcome, I wanted to save some time for you all to ask questions. Please jump in, uh, please uh, un unmute yourselves and uh, either use your videos or your microphones to uh, share your thoughts and, and, and sentiments with us. We, we're, we're doing this uh, not only for us, but we're doing it for you because our audience is so important. And at a time like this, we have to unite and we, we use music as a communicative tool. And uh, it truly is the universal language, uh, which is why we are all here today with smiles on our faces, uh, with these masterful scores ready for you, uh, ready for your consumption. So I hope you've enjoyed this evening. Um, a few reminders before we open this up, before we open the microphones up to everybody. Uh, we will be doing a re-presentation uh, of this event, I'm, I'm, I'm thrilled to say, with one additional piece. Um, and we look forward to a thrilling spring semester with an entirely uh, new um, of, of rep uh, and, and incoming symphony members. And I, I want to uh, uh, also note this, I, a, a wonderful musician um, once told me, I was quite young, he's, uh, we were talking about string quartets and uh, he said, well, no, a string quartet is four players. So how much effort does every person within that quartet have to put in order for the string quartet to be full in order for the string quartet to resemble 100%. Well, math, for those mathematicians here and scientists, uh, the obvious answer is 25%, yes? If you put 25% times four, it's 100%. Uh, unfortunately, music doesn't work like that. And so what you're doing tonight is truly a culmination. It's, you're actually hearing, um, if I'm doing the math correctly, you're, you're hearing 8,400%. Uh, because everybody has to put in 100% right, in order for this assemblage to happen. Um, and this speaks about the integrity of our program at Hunter. This speaks about the integrity of our, of our, mus our brilliant musicians and of our programs here. You know, um, I believe uh, it was Ethan who mentioned our uh, incredible uh, uh, chamber music program and our jazz program. Uh, 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 and, and, and our piano program, uh, program amongst many others. I'm, uh, this is sort of just the tip of the iceberg, not to mention Hunter Opera Theater, as well as many other things that many of you are involved in, uh, which we look forward to in upcoming weeks. But um, I thought I would share that short note because it speaks, it speaks very loudly about uh, our process, yeah, and how we're moving uh, uh, So from one musician to another, uh, I'd like to thank all of you uh, immensely and thank you for this brilliant work. And we look forward to forging onward. Um, at this time, I would love to open up uh, the mics to our uh, beloved audience. Um, I know I see so many family and friends here and I'm so grateful. Uh, folks, please speak up, uh, please use the chat, uh, please write us messages. And uh, I'm hoping Professor Jay uh, will uh, put my email in the chat box as well as his so that you can remain on the Hunter Symphony uh, email list for upcoming events and all sorts of exciting music making as well. So uh, without any further ado, I would like to welcome our audience members. Jake, I'm going to the uh, the YouTube stream to uh, just to tra uh, transmit any information that you might see or any questions that might appear. Sorry, David, you were just choppy for a second. Can you repeat that? Oh, I apologize, uh, Jake. Uh, uh, I'm going to leave um, it to you to monitor our YouTube streaming and to uh, see if there might be any questions that have emerged on that platform that Sounds we can good. address. I'll let you know when Terrific. anything comes in. Terrific. Um, Hunter Symphony, uh, we would all love to hear, of course, from you any musicians that would like to speak that haven't already. Uh, it could be about the repertoire. It could be about 
uh, our experiences together, sharing music, making music. Uh, we can, uh, of course, begin the uh, uh, more intense theoretical and historical discussion about our repertoires also. I see Alyssa's hand up and I would like to invite Alyssa back to the podium. Yes, so I was just thinking uh, about Mendelssohn when I started uh, studying the score and we talked about how Mendelssohn is that transitionary figure between the classical style and the romantic style and how in the hybrids he uses uh, this type of uh, tone poem um, depiction, musical depiction of the, the Scottish islands and in the second theme he uses this very romantic theme which reminds us of the um, the human you know the man uh, being in nature uh, thinking abstractly this type of things I think it was really interesting to to study Mendelssohn who was that really middle like figure uh, in this style because um, other of his pieces are completely different and I think this one was uh, really interesting to study I really enjoyed it Alyssa, I, I enjoyed what, what you said because it, it hits at the heart of, uh, I think you mentioned the word tone poem, which it, it exactly is, is, is what this form really is. And uh, we think about Mendelssohn as a, a transitional composer, perhaps, between the classical and the romantic period, uh, many classical elements to his uh, a phrase or my, the phraseology. Um, uh, uh, as well as the overall going on here. Um, yet we look forward past uh, uh, Beethoven, uh, uh, past, of course, uh, 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 1827, and we realized that with Schubert, Mendelssohn, Schumann, and later Brahms, all of which the Hunter Symphony has performed often, um, we sort of uh, get into a, a new aesthetic. And these are things that I think um, beckon back to a previous uh, lecture that we were speaking about not too long ago uh, that I'd like to bring up called style and idea and what exactly that means when we're interpreting music. And when it comes to Mendelssohn, um, you know, there, there are so many minuscule details that we have to take a, a, a account for as musicians, as theorists, as historians. We obviously have to be aware not only of what the immediate musical surface is, and when I speak about the immediate musical surfaces, I'm talking about the mechanics of pitch, duration, dynamic, contour, uh, time point, uh, and um, general sort of temporal organization, yes. Um, and Mendelssohn, uh, this is one particular piece that uh, I think displays so much invention of Mendelssohn. When we hear the word Mendelssohn, we think of the octet that he wrote when he was 16 years old, and we think about another musical virtuoso like the likes of Mozart. Um, and yet this work is so mature, uh, much earlier than uh, many of the later pieces, obviously, and his work did transform in many ways. Uh, but I think in working on Hebrides or uh, symphony, uh, uh, pardon me, uh, Hebrides Overture with the Hunter Symphony, we really had to identify a stylistic element that we wanted to sound, yeah? We, we wanted to articulate very specific musical ingredients. Uh, and therefore, a lot, uh, again, uh, going into style and idea has to do with historical content. It has to do with a the theoretical underpinning, uh, as well as an aesthetic comprehension of where we are historically throughout the canon of music making, yeah? So, um, you know, part of being in an orchestra is creating a sound. It's not so much about showing up and sitting in your seat and opening up the, the page and looking at the pagination and the musical score uh, uh, in front of you and simply playing when I give a downbeat or, or an upbeat, so to speak. Um, it, it's much more than that. And I think this semester, perhaps what I'm, I'm most proud of is that we were able to cultivate a very specific sound. And when we were working in smaller partitions, brass, I remember our sectional strings, all of our different sectionals, winds, harp, percussion, we were trying to understand the integrity of sound and how those building blocks fit together. Yes, how those building blocks functioned 
mechanically. And music, I, I often use the word architecture because I think it's, it's so synonymous with form and structure, the two big words when we talk about theory, music theory, music history, we're talking about uh, uh, something that is very transparent. We can see form and we can feel structure in music that is simply part of the internalization of this magnificent art form. Yes, it's, it's much different than uh, a canvas uh, uh, on a wall. It's much different than a line of poetry. It's much different than the sculpture. Yeah, with music, we have a diagonalization of, of, of a sonic canvas. And therefore we are immediately aware of past, present and future. And as performers, we have to have sort of eyes on every side of our, of, our, of, our, of our music making instruments so that we can connect with our adjoining and non-adjacent musical partners. Um, this is a, a very long loop uh, for me to sort of circumvent around, all to go back to what Alyssa was saying about sound and what it meant to create a tone poem of Mendelssohn's and to look at those incredible scapes, those visual scapes, those soundscapes, those visual scapes of the coast of Scotland and, and, and uh, of, of Great Britain and, and whatnot. So um, to bring music alive, we have to bring idea, style and concept. We have to, we have to be very specific about this, yes? Um, and so in, uh, in doing so, um, we, have to be, we have to be very articulate and we have to be able to share our ideas with our musical colleagues in a compelling way. Yeah. Excellent point. I see um, a question from, uh, from Jake. Uh, Jake has a question that uh, we would love to hear. Yes, hi. So this is a question from YouTube from Karen, Christine, uh, Karen Christie Ward. And she asked, how was the repertoire, repertoire chosen? Fantastic question, I, and, and thank you for joining us this evening. Uh, and uh, uh, I, I, there are many reasons why the program uh, was assembled in the way that it did. Uh, first and foremost, it represented music that I thought was altogether representative and uh, uh, reflective of our collaboration with the Jewish and Hebrew Studies uh, program uh, with, uh, with Professor Leah Garrett and uh, Mendelssohn was a Jewish composer. Uh, Bruch, while not being a Jewish composer, composed a piece that was based uh, on these two magnificent Jewish themes. And it is, it is revered uh, by many as, as, a, as, a, uh, as uh, a, a critical component to the literature. Uh, and uh, it just so happens that uh, aside from the religious component, this repertoire uh, uh, for me programming must always be multifaceted, whether I'm curating or whether it's assembling an entire seasons or two worth of programming, other factors come into play. And it just so happened that these were pieces that um, the Mendelssohn we were certainly familiar with, uh, but we had a lot of uh, uh, work to do refining our, our, our Mendelssohn together, becoming a new orchestra together uh, the Bruch was a, is a concerto, and I love having different types of, of forms represented in a single concert. We had an overture, and then we had a concerto. And so these are two completely different constructs. Um, architecturally, I'm going to use this word again, architecturally, they are um, uh, asymmetric, uh, yes. And so uh, my goal as a music director and my mission is to always bring extraordinary diversity and inclusion into the Hunter Symphony, which is why we have now, uh, after four uh, uh, fantastic seasons, uh, we've spanned over 600 years of literature, uh, ranging from works from um, the 1400s, the 15th century, all the way to a work that was composed 12 years ago uh, and everything in between, uh, all aesthetics, all styles, uh, and all instrumentations, by the way. It just so happens that this evening you are, um, you all are witnessing the grand orchestra in full orchestra, full score. Uh, we sometimes break off into smaller partitions and do chamber orchestras. We do sinfonietta performances, but this evening we are doing a full symphonic orchestra presentation. Uh, so that, uh, those are some of the factors that go into this. 
uh, my goal also is to uh, provide our musicians with canvas, musical canvases that are very rich and deep that they can really uh, 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 soak and 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 uh, soak into and absorb from. Uh, yes, and these are works that have a lot to offer. Uh, and I should mention that a lot of the programming has to do with um, adjacent works that may uh, be performed in in the future. So in this particular case, we are looking, uh, we just came off a performance of Brahms three uh, uh, last year, uh, Florence Price Symphony number no. uh, three, uh, Tchaikovsky Piano Concerto number no. one, a uh, piece by John Zorn, which uh, I'm referencing, uh, was written 12 years ago, uh, and so forth, many other works. Uh, but this is part of a very, very special collection of works that our musicians need. And it's, it's very nourishing music because there's so much to learn from it. And from a technical perspective, that stands uh, uh, very sound, uh, as well as a musical perspective, we need to be aware, we as musical experts, we need to be aware of everything that is going on around us. We have to have this sort of omni-pan vision, this panoramic vision of everything going on around us. Um, so um, I, I hope that answers uh, some of your question. I see, uh, I see a question or, or I see a hand up from Anthony. I would uh, love to invite Anthony up if, uh, uh, if he has something to uh, say or ask or, or uh, uh, any other comments, of course, are welcome. Oh, I, I believe that was just a clapping or a hands up, uh, which I enjoy. Terrific. Uh, excellent. Uh, any other questions? Jake, are we uh, hearing any other uh, feeds from YouTube at this point? Uh, yes, we have a question from Herton. How long did it take to have these musical passage, uh, pieces done? How many hours of practice? Great, uh, excellent question. And uh, a question that I I'm, I'm going to give a, a broad estimation on. Um, we had begun this, this program, this, this wonderful collection of works uh, on, in August. Our musicians were uh, given the music throughout the summer months and some of uh, our new members, of course, did not really register for orchestra or become a part of the orchestra until the first week of September. So we are always, we are here at the Hunter community, uh, Hunter community as well as the Hunter Symphony, we are inclusive. Yeah, so um, I'm happy to say that we are growing weekly, the Hunter Symphony. Uh, so that being said, some of this repertoire was new to uh, some of our members. For other members, this music uh, was sort of like an old friend. It was sort of like going back to Mendelssohn and refurbishing and repracticing, refingering a certain uh, uh, um, thorny uh, uh, passage and so forth. Um, we rehearsed together an average of three to four hours a week together as an orchestra. Now, if we multiply that by our, our, our 80 members or so, and everybody is rehearsing many hours a day, uh, we get in the hundreds to thousands of hours that it takes from start to finish. Uh, then uh, Jake and I uh, had worked on putting every single musical stratosphere together and we, we sewed it up like a delicate tapestry, um, which took many, many hours as well. Um, all to say that there is an incredible amount of industry in, in this process uh, uh, and one that I could not be more proud of. Thanks, David. No more YouTube questions for now. Terrific. Uh, to both of our audiences, YouTube as well as uh, Zoom, uh, it has been a privilege to be here before you this evening with the Hunter Symphony. Uh, I just have to let you all uh, my heart warmed thanks, and I am eternally to all of you. Uh, this is an unprecedented um, concert for us as the Hunters of Finale and we are tomorrow. So please keep tuned uh, and keep an eye out for uh, emails upcoming, another concert in two weeks and many other projects that I know you'll find engaging and compelling and communicative.
please join us, please stick around. Uh, I'm going to leave this chat window open and for symphony members as usual, I'm going to go back to our symphony room and uh, take any questions and or uh, other comments there as well. Uh, one last thank you to our audience. Musicians, could we please applaud our audience? Could you please take your mutes off and applaud our, our audience? Thank you. thank you so much. Uh, and uh, yes, yes. And uh, I'm applauding all of you. And uh, I want to thank you again this evening. Uh, this has been an overwhelming joy and an overwhelming honor to present this music to you with this uh, exquisite orchestra. Um, I wish, uh, please, all of you stay healthy and safe and, and those other goods uh, so that we can all stay healthy and keep making music together. Uh, please join us, upcoming concerts, and thank you again. Uh, one last thank you. Uh, to our chair, uh, Professor Suzanne Farron, uh, and to everybody in the Hunter uh, family here, uh, the, uh, my colleagues, I, I, I have a special spot in my heart for all of you, and you've all been so supportive uh, through, through these, difficult, these challenging times of COVID and beyond. Uh, so uh, we thank all of you, and we are one uh, mega meta machine musical machine here together so uh enjoy the evening please keep healthy and i look forward to seeing you 